welcome to my channel. My name is Doug and I'm back with another fountain pen review. We are getting very close to that annual lucrative gift giving season. And today, in addition to looking at a new fountain pen, I want to talk about the buying experience. Everything from buyer's remorse and the feeling of getting ripped off to the euphoria of getting that incredible deal where your pride in your purchase goes beyond your love of whatever the heck you bought. I know a lot of you have experienced both ends of that spectrum of feelings. And in the year and a half that I've been purchasing fountain pens to review, I've certainly hit the endorphin rush, frenzied avarice, and that awful feeling in the pit of your stomach when you realize you just made a fool of yourself as a consumer. I'm going to be making a video in a couple of weeks where I'll make a few suggestions for gifts for the fountain pen lover on your Christmas list that will hopefully help you through your annual Christmas shopping nightmare. In the meantime, let's look at the fountain pen that prompted my feelings of buyer's remorse, the Monteverdi Monza 3, right now. Okay, a nice little surprise in the mail today from my friends at Goulet Pens. I had a uh, credit a little while back uh, because of a mix-up in shipping the, on a previous order from well before the pandemic. And uh, so I decided to cash it in when they had a sale on this Monteverde. So let's open it up and see what's inside. There's the pen. And there is the ink, and I got two thank yous, both from Brenda. One for the ink and one for the pens, I suppose. And I got a sticker, how nice. And of course, a sucker. So this was a deal. You got this uh, Monteverde Monza that has three nibs with it, an Omniflex, a medium, and a fine and you get a bottle of ink and it was all for like 25 bucks so i thought what the hell might as well that's gonna be my motto from now on what the hell might as well what the hell no 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 hey peter can you blow that towel rack down here thank you And they did allow you to choose which ink you wanted to have uh, with your pen. And I chose the Monteverde Ocean Noir. So we'll see how that works out. One fountain pen body, three removable front sections, three stainless steel nibs. And I chose the blue. It's still condensing a little bit from the chilly air outside. Of course, it's got a number five size nib on it, stainless steel. And there's another one of the sections. This one is, this one is the medium with the converter. Omniflex. And um, the feed is transparent. And we got two cartridges as well. So I'll clean this pen out and we'll take a good look at it and make some comparisons. I'm going to try to control myself here as I might rant a little bit in this pen review. But as usual, I want to go over the parts and features of this pen, show some size comparisons, some measurements, and then provide a writing sample. After the writing sample, please stay tuned as I will talk about what I like and what I don't like so much about this fountain pen. But first, let me discuss how I got this pen and talk a little bit about the buyer's experience. In general, the buyer's experience. I've bought a lot of pens in 2020. I totaled them all up and it's over $2,500 worth of purchases. These pens, of course, fuel my review channel and my YouTube income has covered about $500 of those purchases. I work hard for the money, so hard for the money. So as a business venture, this channel is a total failure. Well, here's to failure. To failure. Oh, thank you. It's very kind of you. My pen purchases have been everywhere from fantastic pens that I'll never part with 
to some pens that went into the bin before even being inked up. I couldn't even give them away as gifts because I don't dislike anyone that much. Well, maybe a gift of a Sharpie to the runner-up next week. We'll see. Oh, snap. All of those purchases lay somewhere on the spectrum of very satisfied to very dissatisfied, with most somewhere in the middle. But you all recognize the extremes of that spectrum like the purchase you made of a fantastic product that was above and beyond your expectations and at the same time at a price point that makes you want to brag to everyone look what I got do you know how much I paid for this that was my experience with this Waterman Karen for example it's one of the finest pens that I own and I got it for a relative song at hundred and twenty three dollars Canadian I don't know what I love more the pen or the bargain I have no doubt that the bargain enhances my writing experience. Of course, there's the other end of the spectrum. The pen that you paid good money for and was so disappointing that you felt a little sick in your stomach about it. This isn't really buyer's remorse. That's when you buy something where your expectations were higher than reality of the purchase or when you realize after the purchase you paid way too much for it and you didn't do your homework and got something that wasn't as terrific as you thought. That's what happened with me and this Visconti Van Gogh. I paid $340 Canadian for this pen. Now, it isn't a horrible pen by any stretch. It's pretty and it writes nicely. But from what I know now about it, the small nib, the metal section, I should really not have paid that kind of money for it. It's the most expensive pen in my collection and I don't write with it. I keep it for looks and to remind me of my own stupidity. However, there's another class of buyer's remorse when you know you've been totally ripped off. And that's where we begin with today's review, the Monteverdi Monza 3. Now, I wasn't totally ripped off here. I feel bad about the purchase because of the pen, but I make myself feel better because I only bought it to review. And there are a couple of mitigating factors. I bought this from Goulet Pens, some terrific people, terrific service. I highly recommend them. I had an outstanding gift certificate with them from before the pandemic, and I used it to make this purchase. There was also a free bottle of Monteverdi ink included, and the Monza 3 comes with three sections, with three different nibs and three converters, all for $25 US. So with my coupon, I paid $15 US for the pen, three nibs, and a bottle of Monteverdi ink 30 milliliters. Of course, I had to pay $13 US shipping as well. So even if I throw this pen in the garbage, I'm paying $37 Canadian for a 30 milliliter bottle of ink that I can get downtown for about 15 bucks Canadian. Why would I throw this pen in the garbage and why am I ranting about this so much? Because the pen is awful, as we shall see, and it's a Jinhao 992 in Monteverdi clothing and the Jinhao version is available on eBay for four bucks US. I have no doubt that Jinhao makes the Monza for Monteverdi who resell it with their own branding packaging with the two extra nibs and the bottle of ink for $24 US. Deduct the $10 for the ink and you have a 28% markup on this pen. If the flex nib supplied were any good at all, you might have reason to spend this kind of money on this pen. But in my opinion, it isn't a good nib. None of them are. So let's look at the pen and I'll discuss my considerable list of objections. The package shows a wide variety of line widths that will be available from fine to omniflex to medium. And on the back, it says, express your creativity with a different nib for every occasion. The Monteverdi USA Monza 3 offers three removable front sections to accompany a trio of stainless steel nibs in fine, omniflex, and medium. Utilize the fine nib when crafting personal greeting cards. The omniflex nib adapts to every curve, which is perfect for unique line variation. Choose the medium nib when writing down your daily thoughts and quick meeting notes. Each set comes with three piston converters, two ink cartridges, and is presented in a beautiful gift box. There are refilling instructions provided on the inside of this sleeve, 
And then we see a Monteverdi USA Worldwide Headquarters in a large, bold cartouche, under which we see the USA address in Canoga Park, California. Then made in China slash packaged in the USA. And yes, I used the medium nib to write out my daily thoughts about this pen. So let's look at this Chinese made American pen. Overall, it's a very light, very small, translucent plastic pen with chrome hardware. Let's put it up against a Pilot Metropolitan so you can keep in mind just how small this pen really is. The Metro looks big compared to it. Better yet, let's see a Preppy next to it. The Preppy is also bigger than this Monza. By the way, the Preppy here is five bucks from Goulet. From the top, we see a plastic rounded finial, a chrome ring with attached chrome clip. The clip is very sturdy and very usable. Looking through the translucent cap, you see there's a cap seal inside there that will keep the nib from drying out, a good feature. The cap tapers up to a wide chrome cap band. That is two tapering bands with Monteverdi, USA on one side and Monza laser engraved on the other. Incidentally, this is the seventh time USA is mentioned in the branding for this package. There's a small step down to the barrel, which tapers down to a very obvious injection molding plug at the bottom. The cap unscrews with one turn to reveal a small tapering section of the same translucent blue injection molded plastic and a number five size steel nib, this one being the Omniflex, and it has a transparent plastic feed. Here are the other two nibs in fine and medium. These have the typical Chinese nib engravings that say Iridium Point Germany. Maybe the Iridium comes from Germany. The nibs certainly don't. Examining the section, we can easily see the injection molding seams on the sides. And when you get to the section threads, at least they've made a divot there to keep the gates from sticking out too far. They do stick out a little ways. We also see a black silicone o-ring to seal the barrel and section. This might be here to keep you from over tightening the section on the barrel causing cracking. Cracking of this plastic has been reported on this model as well as the Jinhao 992. I doubt it's going to allow eyedroppering of this pen because of that plug at the end of the barrel. Makes it an impossibility right away. And here is the standard international converter and of course it comes with two standard international black ink cartridges. And with the section and converter out of the barrel, we can see the ribs that are familiar to Jinhao 992 owners. The same ribs are present in the cap as well. Yeah, those ribs there. The cap posts deeply and securely, which is a good thing because it's almost too small to write with unposted. In the hand, the pen is very light and the section is very short and thin. These threads are not sharp, which is good because the shortness and narrowness of the section forces me to grip this pen on the threads. Now let's look at some size comparisons. And here is the Monteverdi Monza with a Pilot Metropolitan, a Pen BBS 308, a Wingsong 618, and a Jinhao 51A. Now let's look at them posted. And here are the pens posted. And I particularly included the Pen BBS 308 because I want to refer to the comparison between those two pens later. Now let's look at some measurements and I'll be back with a writing sample. back with the writing portion of the review. This is Clairefontaine 90 GSM paper and this is the Monteverdi
Monza. And this is with the Omniflex steel nib. And the ink today is Monteverde Ocean Noir. Here is the swatch for the Ocean Noir along with some KWZ Azure number no. 5 and Ackerman Shocking Blue. So I'm going to show all three nibs and then talk about them. This is the Omniflex. pressure no pressure pushing it I don't know whether you can tell or not but I'm carving up a lot of paper with that nib it's very scratchy. But more than that, in terms of flexing, you really have to push it. See, I'm, to I'm torn up to paper here. You really have to push it to make it flex. And here is the fine nib. The uh, Omniflex and the fine nib are decently wet, but extremely scratchy to the point that I'm just ripping up paper with this one as well. And here is the medium nib. This isn't as scratchy, but it is scratchy. It's not tearing up the page like the other two nibs did. So the line widths. So the Omniflex goes from a 0.3 millimeter to a 0.6 millimeter line. Which makes it a western XXF to a medium or a Japanese XF to a medium. The fine nib is 0.3 milliliter, millimeters in uh, line width which makes it a western XXF or a Japanese XF. Whereas the medium is a 0.4 millimeter line, which makes it between a Western XXF and a Western XF. 
or a Japanese extra fine fine so let's go back to the Omniflex nib uh, which is one of the reasons you might consider buying this pen is just for the Omniflex nib as to line variation we'd expect the flex to have the most my problem is that this nib is so stiff in order to get it to flex I start, I start tearing up the paper I'm no flex writer by any stretch but I can't think that you could write with anywhere near a level of comfort to use this nib at all I certainly can't write with it but let's give a quote a shot anyway okay uh, I had to really fight through that because part way through I had to stop and dig the paper out from between the tines because it started smearing and it's so very scratchy that I can hardly move the nib on the page I didn't try to flex that at all uh, it's very very wet but uh, I just couldn't write with this pen very well during that you can see my handwriting really sucks now so I'm going to discard this Omniflex nib as unusable so that leaves me with the fine and the medium from the packaging you'd think I'd have some wide selection of line widths available for my fancy writing my cards and my thoughts well my thoughts are that these nibs are horrible all three are scratchy and way thinner than their designations the fine is an extra fine the medium is a fine and Leon's getting larger Number. if you like a flex nib that feels like a nail and two very thin scratchy extra nibs this gift package might just be the Christmas present for you it's Christmas and we're all in misery let me try some reverse writing here well surprise surprise it's much smoother in reverse uh, and quick writing if I try to flex this it will starve that feed eventually but it's actually a fairly wet nib so I'm not worried about the feed keeping up uh, the less I write with this pen the better I feel actually so what do I like and what do I not like about this fountain pen well let's see if I can find some nice things to say about it See lying no good rotten four flushing low life snake licking dirt eating inbred overstuffed ignorant blood sucking dog kissing brainless dickless hopeless heartless fat ass bug eyed stiff legged spotty lip worm headed sack of monkeys uh the color I like the color of the pen that translucent blue I think what bugs me most about this pen is the hypocrisy of this American product that is a hugely overpriced and overhyped rebranded Chinese pen that can be had for four bucks this actually reminds me of the Amazon basics pen that is another rebranded Jinhao manufactured pen under a US label at least the Amazon basics pen is a relatively good pen purchase this is not in fact if this is what the Jinhao 992 feels like and writes like I'm not interested in that one either get out let's look at some comparable pens at this price point of $15 US here is a pen BBS 308 with a number six size steel fine nib that writes like a dream this pen is made from turned acrylic rather than injection molded plastic and has a gorgeous comfortable section it fits balanced beautifully in the hand both posted and unposted and is $15 US with $6 shipping the Monza was $15 when you take away the $10 bottle of ink and this had $13 of shipping and the pen BBS came in this gift box in fact this Galaxy 308 which is a little bit more expensive but it came in a gift box with this lovely kimono truly buy this platinum preppy for five bucks and add a ten dollar bottle 
of Monteverdi ink and you have a much better purchase for the first time fountain pen buyer. So for me, I'm rationalizing this purchase by thinking of it this way. It cost me $27 US for a bottle of Monteverdi ink. But I got another pen review video out of it. If this video makes me $17 in YouTube revenue in about a year from now, I will have broken even. And even at that, it won't take away this nagging feeling that I still got ripped off. And there you have it. If you like this video, please like and subscribe and don't forget to ring that bell to get instant notifications whenever a new video is posted. And that just leaves it for me to say... Thank you for watching. And that's all she scratched. I made this.